Hey everyone, so I am back to talk about the lymphatic system and finish up this chapter on anatomy. So your lymphatic system is made up of lymph, lymph nodes, and the thymus gland, the spleen, and lymph vessels. Our spleen is the graveyard for red blood cells. It's how we filter out red blood cells. Um, certain diseases uh, can affect us more if we don't have a spleen. Actually, a true story. I had a friend's mom. She contracted babesiosis, which is a local parasite from ticks. Very rare. She did not have a spleen, and as a result, she experienced more pathology. It was actually more serious. So that's why it's important to know how these different um, organs work. Your lymph is a clear fluid that circulates in the lymph spaces of the body. Lymph helps carry waste impurities away from the cells before it is rooted back to the circulatory system. Your lymphatic immune system drains the tissues spaces of excess intracellular fluid, which is blood plasma found in spaces between tissue cells. The lymphatic immune system is closely connected to the cardiovascular system. They both transport streams of fluid like rivers throughout the body. The difference is that the lymphatic immune system transports lymph, which eventually returns to the blood where it originated. Know that the lymphatic vessels start as tubes that are closed at one end. They occur individually or in clusters called lymphatic capillaries. Lymphatic capillaries are blind and tubes that are the origin of the lymphatic vessels. The lymph capillaries are distributed throughout most of the body, except the nervous system. Know that lymph nodes are gland-like structures found inside the lymphatic vessels. Lymph nodes filter the lymphatic vessels that help fight infection. Your primary function of your lymphatic system is to carry nourishment, act as a defense, remove waste, and provide a suitable fluid environment for the cell. Know that your endocrine system is a group of specialized glands that affect growth, development, sexual functions, health of the entire body. Glands are secretory organs that remove and release certain elements from the blood to convert them into new compounds. There are two types of glands. Endocrine glands, also known as ductless glands, such as the thyroid, pituitary glands release hormones directly in the bloodstream. Exocrine glands, also known as duct glands, such as sweat and oil glands of the skin, produce a substance that travel through small tube-like ducts. Know that hormones are secretions such as insulin, adrenaline, estrogen, found that stimulate function, activity, or other secretions in the body. Hormones influence the welfare of the entire body. So know that if there's a hormone imbalance, we get behavioral changes, um, growth issues, Know that um, when our glands aren't working properly, like a thyroid issue, we show symptoms. Know that hormones are actually chemicals. There are over 30 hormones telling your body what it should do every day. There are endocrine glands and hormones that secrete that have a tremendous influence on your body. They affect sleep, digestion, growth, sexual development, and many other important functions. They give you a little chart there in the body. The average adult... Oh, that's for the... Never mind, that's for digestive. We'll get to that in a bit. Um, know that the endocrine glands and their functions function as follows. The penile gland, which plays a major role in sexual development, sleep, and metabolism. The pituitary gland, which is the most complex organ of the endocrine system. This gland affects almost every physiological process of the body. Growth, blood pressure, contractions during childbirth, breast milk production, sexual organ functions in both women and men, thyroid gland function, and the conversion of food into energy, metabolism. The thyroid gland controls how quickly the body burns energy, metabolism, makes proteins, and how sensitive the body should be to other hormones. Know your parathyroid gland regulates blood calcium and phosphorus levels so the nervous system and muscular system can proper functionally. I have an interesting story on the parathyroid gland. I had a family friend a while ago who went to the doctor for surgery, and this is why knowing anatomy can help you make health decisions or be your own health advocate, as I should say. She goes to the doctor, she had a goiter, which is a lump on your um, thyroid or parathyroid. Doctor went there to move the goiter. He took out the entire parathyroid gland. In doing so, she was unaware of this. So she was at the beach with her family and she had a full on seizure. She was having blackouts and seizures, did not know what was going on, and it wasn't until the doctor had looked and said what surgery she had recently, they did further testing, and they realized the doctor had removed the entire parathyroid gland. And for a doctor to do this, it's a pretty hard mistake. They should have known better. It's very hard to remove your entire parathyroid gland. Because he did this, she could not process calcium, so she was on supplements, all this medication, and she was delivered the news that this will ultimately kill her. And this was... Um, 
it, it was a really hard hit in the family and then they also had to help her get justice. They had to do medical malpractice lawsuit. They had to organize all this information. They had to have forensic examinations. All these things were important because her parathyroid gland was removed. And that's why knowing what can happen if it's not there can help you look at things if you're having health issues. Um, to this day, she actually was diagnosed with Lou Gehrig's disease and this was really sad. Um, I always wondered if that was because she had this removed and it made it come on quicker. But that is one of the issues um, of when we start removing our body. It's almost like if you go into a car and you start cutting cables, that's how we learn about how our body functions. If you look up different studies that were done in the previous dark ages of medicine in the 50s and before that, that's when we started to know how the body was functioned by removing things and all of that. So onto your pancreas, if you don't have, um, this will help you digest carbohydrates, protein, and fat. So when you have pancreatic cancer, not to sound gross, you actually poop out your fat, your stool is white. If your pancreas ruptures through a reaction, um, certain drugs and vaccines can actually cause a reaction causing the pancreas to rupture. That will cause type 1 diabetes. Type 1 diabetes is an autoimmune disorder. When your pancreas doesn't work properly, it doesn't produce the insulin. So that's type 1 diabetes. Type 2 diabetes, our pancreas produces the insulin, but our body doesn't accept it. And that's why type 2 is usually reversible. Know that your adrenal glands secrete about 30 steroid hormones and control metabolic process of the body, including the fight or flight response when we're scared. Know that your ovaries, um, which is your female sexual glands, function in reproduction as well as determining female sexual characteristics. Know that your testes, singular testicle, are male sexual glands that function in reproduction as well as determining male sexual characteristics. Know that the digestive system, also known as the gastrointestinal system, is responsible for breaking down food into nutrients and waste. It consists of our mouth, stomach, intestines, salivary, gastric glands, and other organs. Know that digestive enzymes are chemicals that change certain types of food into soluble, capable of being dissolved form, and then can be used throughout the body. The food in soluble form is transported into the bloodstream and used by the body cells and tissues. The entire food digestion process takes about nine hours to complete. And you'll notice that if you're eating at odd times, not to sound gross, but you'll actually poop at different times. That's part of our system working. The excretory system is a small group of organs including the kidneys, liver, skin, large intestine, and lungs that are responsible for purifying and eliminating waste. The kidneys get rid of urine. The liver discharges toxins. The skin eliminates through perspiration and sweating. Large intestine eliminates decomposed and undigestible foods such as pooping. The lungs exhale carbon dioxide. Know that the your kidneys make sure your blood is not too thick or thin, it is not overloaded with waste and other parts of the body, and then about 440 gallons of blood flow through your kidneys every day. The average adult has about 25 feet of intestines in your lifetime. Your digestive system handles about, oh, in your lifetime, your digestive system handles about 50 tons of food. I swear this book is written odd. <laughs> Your lung contains almost 1,500 miles of airways that enable you to breathe. Every minute you breathe in, 13 pints of air. Your respiratory system is how you breathe. Respiration is the act of breathing. Your lungs are a spongy tissue. You have microscopic cells in there. Your diaphragm is the muscular wall that separates the thorax and the chest and helps control the breathing. With each breathing cycle, um, you have an exchange of gases. Inhalation. Breathing in through the nose or mouth. Oxygen is passed throughout the blood. During exhalation, I hear a lot of my, I hear a lot of my sassy students or angry students, they'll go like this when you tell them something they don't want to hear. The dreaded exhalation that drives us teachers crazy. That's breathing outward. Carbon dioxide is expelled. Oxygen is more essential than either food or water. People may survive more than 60 days without food or several days without water. If they dare pry from oxygen, they will die within a few minutes. The integumentary system consists of your skin and its accessory organs, accessory organs such as the oil, sweat glands, and sensory receptors, hair and nails. It is very complex and it serves as a protective covering that helps regulate the body's temperature. The word integument means natural covering. So you can think of the skin as a protective overcoat of your body against the outside elements that you encounter every day, such as germs, chemicals, sun exposure. Skin is also water resistant. We're gonna be covering skin growth, structure, and function in later chapters, as well as diseases. Um, know that every minute you shed 30 
thousand to forty thousand dead skin cells from your body. They can total up to about forty pounds of skin in your lifetime. Also makes up our dust. Know that we actually have mites that are living on our skin, which is actually pretty cool. I think they live in your um, eyelashes and in your skin cells. Follicle mites. If they're in an overgrowth, they can potentially cause diseases such as hair loss. Know that one square centimeter of skin contains one yard of blood vessels, 15 sebaceous glands, 10 hairs, 3 million cells, 12 sensory um, apertures for heat, 2 sensory for cold, 200 nerve endings to record pain, and 25 pressures, pressure stimuli, 3,000 sensory cells, 700 sweat glands, and 4 yards of nerves. So the skin is very important, it keeps us healthy, it protects against disease, and also is what we adorn with uh, makeup or um, hair dye, all kinds of things. And the last system, which, oh my gosh, I can't tell you how many students make jokes about this, the reproductive system. Yes, men have a penis, females have a vagina. That's the basics of your reproductive system. Um, they perform the function of getting pregnant. The reproductive system produces hormones, estrogen in females, testosterone in men. These hormones affect and change the skin in several ways. Acne, loss of scalp hair, facial hair, growth, color, skin pigmentation. So whenever we're dealing with any kind of issues like that, cosmetologists have many products and treatments that can address this. Um, and even though the reproductive system is not like talked about in detail, it does have a function. I know a lot of people talk about um, you know, different parts of the reproductive system. There is not a model on this book. I think in the next one there is, um, but everything has a reason. And I know, um, here's just a fun little note because I was doing some research on this for one of my natural health groups. Um, one of the models of the books showed the male penis with how it should look with the foreskin. And I know a lot of people, um, you know, think it's a joke or they'll say, oh, the foreskin doesn't have a function. It actually does. Newer research is showing that the foreskin is actually important and it can actually protect us against disease if cared for properly. So it's one of those things how anatomy and physiology is always growing and we're always learning new things. Um, check out documentaries like American Circumcision. It's a really good documentary. Um, body Story is a really good documentary series on YouTube that goes over how the body functions. Um, Vaxxed is also a really good um, documentary. It talks about health debates, about vaccination and pros and cons. Um, know that another documentary, there's a human body one that the BBC did and it showed you how your body functions. All these documentaries can lump together and the more information you have, the more um, exposure you have to this, the better it can help you understand how our bodies work and function. And that is it for the dreaded chapter six, Anatomy and Physiology. It is very, very um, long, but don't worry. After these chapters, we're gonna be entering the meat and potatoes and the fun stuff. Next chapter is gonna be chapter seven, skin structure, growth, and nutrition. One of my favorite chapters. It's what really got me into um, skincare. And if you guys are vitamin junkies, you will absolutely love that chapter. It's a smaller chapter. So after we do that, we're gonna then delve into chapter eight, which is skin disorders and diseases. All that good stuff. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this anatomy thing. I'm sorry if I did a lot of reading, I kinda had to. It's one of those chapters that was very dry. It had a lot of information and it's a ton at you at once. So um, don't be worried. As long as you know the basics of this, you will do good in your state board written. So I'll see you guys soon to talk about chapter seven, um, skin growth and nutrition. And I hope you guys all had a wonderful um, lesson for today. Please relax, enjoy the day, search up some videos in your own time, um, ask questions about um, additional documentaries um, that you recommend or that if you wanna know my full movie list, I can give you a whole bunch of other ones that I recommend that are based in anatomy and physiology. So I'll see you guys soon and I'll be right back for chapter seven tomorrow.